guys, just making another video tonight. Uh, it's going to be called Basic Winter Wilderness Kit. And the reason why I'm putting this video together is uh, I have a friend who's just starting out in bushcraft. He bought himself a 60 liter mountain equipment co-op backpack. And he's not really too sure what to put in it. So I came up with this list to kind of help him out. Uh, with all the gadgets and gizmos out there, it's kind of uh, overwhelming to know what to buy and what you really need. So I made up a list of some of the basic things you need, and then I put a bunch of extras, some luxuries, I guess you could call it. I'm just going to show based off of my experiences and this is just my opinion of the things uh, you need when you go out in the wilderness. I'm going to start with what's called the five C's of survival and then after that I will show you the extras that I've added on. So I have here uh, just a cheap school backpack, it's balding. Uh, I used to use this many years ago for backpacking, back when I used to pack very light. And I still do use this pack, just for shorter hikes. And I don't recommend getting a, a school backpack or anything like that, but I'm just using this for an example. The biggest disadvantage to this pack is it just has one main compartment which is kind of a hassle sometimes. So I'm just going to start off with the five C's. Uh, these are items that are most difficult to reproduce when you're out in the wilderness and that's why they're the most important things to carry with you. First off is a container. It's one of the five C's. This one's a 40 ounce stainless steel water bottle made by Clean Canteen. And water is one of the basic necessities of life, so you always want to bring water with you. But the, the most important thing about having a stainless steel water bottle is you can collect water from a stream or a lake or melted snow and bring it to a Roll and boil for one minute, and that generally makes it safe to clean or to drink. You'll notice the entire water bottle is stainless steel except for the lid. Obviously, you do not want the lid on when you're boiling it. And I just want to point out before we get too far into this that if you're new to the outdoors, um, First of all, if you're going hiking in the winter, you want to make sure you're dressed properly with gloves and the proper footwear. You also want to hike somewhere in a familiar place. Let someone know where, when you're going or where you're going and when you'll be back. Uh, on the next, or the next on the list is combustion. This is an emergency fire kit of mine and you should keep everything in a waterproof container for one you should have a minimum of two lighters you should have a good fire steel waterproof matches and striker and you should also have some tinder like uh, birch bark wood shavings those are natural tinders you can also use Vaseline and dryer lint mixed together, jute twine and wax is also a good tinder. It's going to help you get a fire going and especially if you're new, I believe fire building is your most important skill to have. Fire is another basic uh, survival necessity. Fire provides so many things, it provides light, warmth, comfort cook your food, boil your water, uh, dry your clothes, 
Many, many things. Very important thing. Next we have some cordage. Uh, on the list I put uh, paracord, but paracord is very difficult to find around here for me. I've been trying for years, but I can't seem to find it. But I managed to do fine without it. I have a thicker cord, like a nylon type cord. I recommend having at least 20 feet of a thicker cord and 20 feet of a thinner cord. This is great for putting shelters together, making repairs, tying things up, uh, making snares, just endless possibilities really with cordage. And it is very difficult to make cordage in the woods, but it is possible. I, I can do it with uh, spruce roots. Next important thing is your cutting tool. I have here a Gerber Big Rock Camp Knife. Uh, to be honest, sometimes I go out hiking and I barely use my knife at all, but it's a very important thing to have. You can do so many things with it. And the requirements I find for a knife is it should be made from high carbon steel. It should be a full tang. You can see the blade continues all the way through the handle, all the way through. That's called a full tang. Some knives just have a little rat tail that's jammed into a handle. You want to avoid these. This you can use for batoning, for splitting wood. Uh, I recommend that the blade be at least five inches long and you want a good sturdy sheath. This sheath is kind of ugly looking I find but it's got a plastic insert in there and I want something sturdy enough that if I fall on top of this it's not going to go right through my leg. I see some of those really cheap thin vinyl sheath. Uh, avoid those. That's your cutting tool. And your final C is cover. This is a 10 by 12 camouflage tarp. Uh, once you get more experienced, uh, tarp can be more useful than just making a shelter out of, but the most common thing is to make a quick shelter. But you can also collect rainwater in these. You can gather materials for uh, a better shelter, like gathering leaves and stuff like that. So those are your basic, very basic things you could just take with you out in the woods. And uh, you do all right. But I got a bunch more things here that I think is just as important. And I'm going to slowly go through all these as well. This tool right here, this hatchet, this is my most used tool. I use it more than a knife, and I think this is a very important thing to have. Small hatchet. You can see how short the handle is, and I got a really good sheath for it as well. Uh, you can bi build uh, traps, shelters, uh, tripods for cooking, so many things you can do with a, a hatchet. Next, most important thing for me is my 24 inch buck saw. This is my second most used item. I recommend a 24 inch. This way when you're cutting you have nice comfortable long strokes if you have a really short buck saw, you're, you're doing really short strokes, and I find it rather awkward. So I recommend a 24-inch buck saw. And if you're wondering why I don't use a, a retractable or foldings type saw, is I do have those for backup, 
But if you're going to be doing lots of wood cutting, which I do, I find this is the most comfortable. Another very important item is a first aid kit. Uh, this one I've added to. I found it was just uh, not quite enough what I needed. So just get yourself a basic first aid kit. You can get yourself a, a fancier one if you like. But basically you want some band-aids. You want some 4 inch by 4 inch gauze pads for large wounds. You want about 10 alcohol prep pads. You want something like polysporin to kill infections. Uh, crazy glue to help sew together uh, big gashes. That's actually what I heard crazy glue was designed for, was to replace stitches. I don't know if that's true or not. And also you want some medical tape to tape on uh, any bandages or anything like that. This is a, a multi-tool. This one does have the pliers on it. That's probably one of the most important things to have on a multi-tool is the pliers. Screwdrivers, uh, scissors, all kinds of useful tools in one of those. I have a compass for navigation. And just because you have a compass doesn't mean you're not going to get lost. You really need to know how to use these. Emergency space blanket. Uh, if you ever get trapped out in the wilderness and you don't have the proper clothing on, this is going to help you out until you get a fire going. You want it yourself a good light. This is a Phoenix LD20. Uh, in case you get stuck out past dark, it's always a good idea to have a light. Around here during our winter months, we can have up to 17 and a half hours of darkness. So there's a good chance you're going to be stuck out in the woods after dark. I have some of these hot hands. Uh, in case you're away from your fire, you're on your way home and your hands are get really cold or your feet or any any body part, you can use these hot hands to help warm you up. I have some duct tape on the card. Really good amount of duct tape. Multiple uses. I have an emergency whistle. This is to help uh, get attention if you're ever in trouble. Now this kit, before I keep going, it's uh, I'm not considering it a survival kit. You, you could, but this is just basic items that I would definitely have with me out in the woods. I also included some snare wire. This is uh, one thing I forgot to include when I did my, my own backpack uh, review a couple weeks ago. You should really know how to make snares. You're going to have to catch your own food if you're ever stuck out in the woods for a long period of time. Another thing for navigation is trail marker tape. Uh, I mentioned before in many videos that I follow quad trails, game trails, and they wind all the way through the bush. It's really hard to stay and follow a, a straight direction. So I find this trail marker tape helps me from getting lost. As I said before, I strongly recommend wearing eye protection when you go out in the woods. I almost got my eye poked out with a, a pine, dry pine branch, the ones that are on the bottom of the tree. I turned my head and almost lost my eye, so ever since then I've always worn either sunglasses or safety glasses. I like these clear ones, then if you're ever walking home at night, you can still see I have 
just a bar of soap. You don't need a big bar like this, but hygiene is always very important. Have uh, about eight water purification tablets. This is for purifying water in case you're not able to get a fire going. Some toilet paper, that's a luxury item, it's always good to have. I also included a nesting cook set. I have just a few utensils here. You're probably going to want to have some food with you, so I have some Mountain House chili macaroni with beef. It's all freeze dried, very light. And last is uh, if you're new to the outdoors, you should probably have a book on on the outdoors with you. This one is my favorite. It's uh, Bushcraft by Morris Kohansky. This book deals with my area, Alberta, Canada. It's got all kinds of uh, awesome bushcraft tips, but one of the biggest things is it also has axe safety, knife safety, uh, using a saw properly. This is going to help you out in the woods. I used to carry this with me in my backpack. I still do take it with me once in a while just for reference. Uh, if you didn't don't want this one, I recommend having the SAS Survival Guide. It's a compact version one that won't take up much space in your backpack. So that's pretty much it. I tried not to add too much stuff on there. I hope I didn't forget anything obvious. I'm still working on on this list for my friend. Uh, probably in the ne next couple days I'm going to give him this list and he can start deciding what to spend his money on. So thank you very much for watching.